listening to season five of the Devoted Dreamers podcast. Welcome, Dreamer. I'm so glad you're here. I'm your host, Merit Ansa, and this is the podcast where we talk about our God shaped dreams the ones we're pursuing, hoping to pursue, or waiting on God to reveal. I don't know you yet, but I hope to. And my hope with this podcast is to help you move from uncertainty to action so that your life might sing, that it might sing praises to God for your good and his glory, because he made you for big things. But the more I talk with women about their dreams, the more I understand there's a battle within. Is it okay to be ambitious, to dream, to do something with our skills, gifts, and experiences? If you're struggling with this, don't listen to me. Go read God's word, specifically Ephesians 1, and let the God of the universe remind you that you were chosen for a purpose in order that you might live for the praise of his glory. Sure, you might feel some fear, anxiety, insecurity walking forward in your dream, but don't let those things stop you. We all feel them to some extent, and you cannot let those feelings or the voices that tell you you have no business dreaming this dream, you cannot let them win because you are a daughter of the King. And that's why we're having this conversation. I pray it's what you hear today in this episode. Thank you so much for joining in. As always, you'll find the show notes at meritonsa.com slash podcast. And please connect with me and the community of Devoted Dreamers in our Facebook group or over on Instagram at Merit J-O. And now here's today's episode. Hello, Devoted Dreamers. Welcome. This is episode 97. And I am taking a deep breath over here. I have Julie Landreth on the line. Hi, Julie. Hello. How are you, Merit? I'm good. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for doing this with me. My pleasure. So for those of you who don't know Julie, she was a guest. I went and did the math. April of 2017. So it's been 18 months. I know. Oh, (laughs) yeah. So she was on episode 40. And I titled that um, episode how to just take the next step. So I feel like this is a a timely and interesting, um, exciting reunification between you and me, Julie. Yes. (laughs) So let me take a minute to explain kind of why, why we're doing what we're doing today. So Today happens to be a Thursday. You may not be listening to this on a Thursday, but I had a little window of time with a babysitter for baby Colette and, um, again, didn't have an interview lined up. And Julie, sweet friend, um, texted me earlier this week um, as I was in the midst of preparing the solo episode, episode 96, that um, just happened, wrestling with, um, do I have anything of value to say on this topic of fear of failure. And I had posted on Instagram and Julie, you were just sweet to um, take time out of your day to reach out to me and encourage and affirm what you see God doing in me and just pointing me to truth. You sent me this amazing video of, I don't even know how you say her name, Sarah. Bris- Barry Brissina? Alice, I think. Barry Alice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the song is called Brave. I linked to it in the show notes in episode 96. Um, the words are still echoing in my head. And listeners, if you're out there struggling to be brave, go check out the show notes and go listen to this song, Julie was like, you've probably heard this before, right? It came out in 2013. <laughs> but um, anyway, I pulled up that video in the midst of editing episode 96 and just bawled. I mean, mm-hmm. it's say what you want to say. Let the words fall out. Honestly, I just want to see you be brave. Um. One of the other things she says, and there's maybe there's a way out of the cage where you live. Mm-hmm. And it was like, whoa, I'm living in a cage if I'm living in fear. And I'm doing an episode on fear of failure. Like it was all so inter, 
woven and connected. And Julie was like, hey, if you ever are in a bind again, like, let's just get on and talk. And so in follow up to all that happened around episode 96 within me, and um, I also got a message from another listener on the same day telling me that she's getting ready to start her podcast. And I just, I felt like I got, um, I got so much connection um, with humans when I like sit here in front of my desk, like so many touch points, you specifically, Julie, it was just such a help to me in this space of, um, am I going to let fear rule me or am I going to be brave? And so Julie, I know you've got stuff going on, um, in your world as well. And I definitely want to talk about that. Um, but I'd just love to hear, um, I don't know how that's, that song has hit you and it sounds like it's been, um, playing on repeat in your mind and heart (laughs) as well. Oh gosh. Yeah. So, uh, I created like a, a playlist of just encouragement Mm. for me and, I don't know. I was probably that day I was feeling, I don't know why I was feeling emotional. I was driving to the grocery store and I know I was preparing for my wife lab and, but yet all of me was kind of fighting the preparation work. And (laughs) do you know what I mean? Do you ever have that experience where you're like, I should be doing this. I should be doing this. And I kept feeling like God was like, just trust me just rest. And anyway, so the next thing I know, I'm headed to the grocery store. And on the outside looking in, it might look like procrastination, or it might look like something different. But I don't think it was that. But on the way to the grocery store, that song came on because I was playing my playlist. And I'm literally bawling in my car. I've heard this song a billion times. (laughs) And just the words so much strike me because in Wife Lab, it's it's the words that I speak, you know, it's, it's, um, it's like, I can speak truth and love into these women's lives. <laughs> and that's what I think God's calling me to do. But it can, it, even though I've done it a million times, or I feel like a million times, that's an exaggeration, but <laughs> I get scared every time. And anyway, so I, I, was sitting there at the light listening to this song and I I was thinking to myself someone needs to hear this song today I don't know who but someone needs to hear this song today and it can't be kept to just me and I said you know should I get home and I post this song on my Facebook or something like maybe I just need to put it out there and so when I got home and on Instagram I saw your post I thought oh that's who needs to hear this song and it doesn't you know, maybe everybody needs to hear this song, right? But it was just so clear as day to me. No, Merit needs to hear this song today, Julie. And you need to text her and you need to copy these words to her as well um, so that she could see it. And so, of course, when I was looking for it again, as I'm at home, the video comes up and I'm watching that video and the video, I just want to laugh. I want to cry. And I was laughing and crying at the same time. Mm -hmm. And You know, it just makes me think about when we do what God is asking us to do and we just let ourselves be who we are created to be, how much delight and joy and laughter that he takes in just watching us do what he created us to do. And I just feel like there's this, this, this pulse right now in my heart about the women that I encounter that he literally is just saying, Julie, I want these women to start walking in the freedom of who they are and who they're created to be. They need to know they were created, men and women, male and female, were created in his image. That was a part of my original design, that this oppression that has been going on, that has been happening, that is not my original design. And I just want women to start walking in that freedom that they already have through the blood of Jesus. And so anyway, I just feel like so intensely that he is rising up in women, um, 
this heartbeat, this culture that I feel like it's in this underground that it wants to rise up. Um, just these war, these spiritual warriors and women. And um, anyway, so I felt like you were one of those women that you need to know, be strong, be brave, stand up and who you are and who you're created to be and um, go ahead and take that first step you know, again, you know, Mm -hmm. that'll build your confidence to take the next step and then the next step and then the next step. And of course it's fearful when you take that first step, but for you, you've already been on the microphone. So for you, it's just, you know, maybe before you were in your training wheels, right? Like Mm -hmm. guests, talking with guests is like your training wheel, but now he's asking you to, let's take off one of those training wheels, Merit. Let's get you on there and um, see what happens when you ride that bike without Mm. those wheels. So, Mm. Oh my gosh. Be encouraged. Be (laughs) encouraged. Well, and, and you say those precious words to me and I want to pour them back out to everyone listening too, because that's the point. I mean, that's why, I'm here and even on a microphone. And so thank you for shouting it to me so that I can continue to, to shout it to others. And um, it's funny when I got your, your text came in and, you know, I'm in the middle of something and I see this link and I'm like, oh, I'll look at that later. And then something in me was like, no, no, don't. Don't wait to look at that later. <laughs> look at that right now and watch that video right now. And awesome. um, and it was, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever heard that song before, but if I have, um, listening to it that day, that Tuesday was like hearing it for the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like hearing that voice from God saying, yes, I want to see you. I want to see you be brave. And um, so super encouraging and such a reminder to listen to those promptings, to reach out, um, to the other people around us who, you know what, we all need encouragement. And, um, I so appreciate that you took the time to do that that day. Um, and I want to, um, I want to just take a second to, to like, ask you to talk about the wife lab. So anybody who didn't hear episode 40 a year and a half ago, (laughs) probably has no idea what you're talking about. So we talked, um, way back then. I'm, I'm think that you had already started wife labs at that point. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and now you're thinking about doing your own podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And so talk about all of those pieces a little bit to give us an update, I guess, on what's happened in the last year and a half. Okay. Well, Wife Lab started in 2016 and it basically started, uh, it basically started because, well, prior to that time, Prior to 2016, I had gotten married and I was, I found myself in marriage going, is this really what married life is all about? (laughs) You know, I like my husband, but I don't always love him. And I just really started questioning marriage. And if this was what I was supposed to be doing and if this is what I was cut out for and I just found that my expectations of marriage even though I thought we had gone to premarital counseling and even though all these things I thought pointed to this is the person that I'm supposed to be with yet I was living it and I felt so alone and it just wasn't matching up with what I thought married life was supposed to be. And I started to pray for my husband, but my, uh, my initial attempts were, well, I want to pray for him, but I can't do it alone. And so I got a book and then I would open that book and read those prayers, but I would immediately close them within 20 minutes because my whole heart was saying, well, I'm praying these for him, but I don't know why I'm praying these for him because he's the one that needs to change, not me. And, and I kept 
wrestling with God saying, you know, I have a prayer life with you, God. I turn to you all the time. Don't you see this husband that I'm dealing with? Don't you see uh, how wrong he is? And I was just super uh, critical. And God said, you know, it's awesome that you want to pray for him. And I'm really glad that is a start. But that isn't the posture of prayer that you need to have. And I'm going to teach you. And he might change, but it's not going to happen without your heart changing first um, through this process. So where my prayers originally were, God, change him. Eventually, God taught me how to pray for my husband. And my prayers eventually became, oh, my gosh, God, who is this person that I'm married to? I And I got to this point where I acknowledged God and I trusted him and I said, okay, I know you love me. I know you created me in my mother's womb. I know you made me the way that I am and I know you love me. And so if that stuff is all true of me, wouldn't that be true of the man that you provided for me? And So once I had that aha moment, I said, oh, dear God, I need you to teach me who this man is and how you created him and how you wired him and who you made him to be. Help me to understand him because I'm clearly not seeing him through your eyes. I'm seeing him through my own eyes and my own eyes are speckled in my own glasses, in my own judgment, my own um, ideas, my own upbringing. So I have no concept to even just look at him um, from who he was as a little boy to who he is as an adult and understand like everything about him from the very beginning. And once God started to open my eyes to from the beginning of his life to where he was today, I started to really truly start loving him in such a way that God loves him or is humanly possible or is with God's help that I could love him um, in that way. But it all started through prayer. So fast forward to 2016, and I'm not saying that, you know, my marriage was all of a sudden changed like uh, a miracle, but through the process of praying for my husband, it literally changed the trajectory of my marriage. And so where I had this mindset of, oh dear, you know, he's not serving me the way I want him to serve me, or he's not loving me the way I want him to love me. It changed to how can I love him as he is and who he's created to be? How can I be an image of God to him on earth, because if I'm married to him, that means I am the person now after his mother that is most poised to love him for who he is and to show him God's love on this earth. I don't want that to come from any other woman because I'm the one that's married to him. I'm the one that is supposed to be seeking oneness with him. And so Praying for him changed uh, the trajectory of our marriage for me because what it did is it changed my heart and it opened my heart to him. So I could ride those waves a little bit better when we had our ups and downs because I, my mindset shifted from I need to get out of this to I need to get into this deep, right? Like I need to go all in and I can't have that mindset that says, you know, well, he's being a jerk. This isn't what you signed up for. And so you either need to, you know, get busy getting married or get busy getting out of it. And I decided I didn't want to get busy getting out of it. I wanted to move towards him versus shifting away from him. And so then fast forward into 2016, when we moved to, Uh, we had lived here in San Jose, California for um, a few years, I found myself meeting, like running into women and meeting women. And then they, it was like, I had a sign on my forehead that said, tell me about your relationship with your spouse. (laughs) (laughs) And so all these women just started sharing all these things about their marriages. And I would say, well, have you prayed for your husband? And some would say, I never even thought of that. Or they would say, yeah, I probably should, but I don't. And by the third time, God got my attention and he said, well, maybe you should invite women to pray for their husband and show them what you've learned and, and just teach them about what it means to pray for their husband. 
And so in 2016, in January, I invited women in a local MOPS group to join me and women showed up and they were all desperate to, to know what to do. And I tend to notice patterns. And so I was noticing very similar patterns. One, the pattern started with my own touch point of these are the things that I noticed when I was early married. But then when I started talking and engaging with other women, I noticed, well, they're, they're like going through the same patterns that I went through. So if I can start showing them how I shifted the patterns and they can start adopting these things into their life, maybe their marriages will change for them too. And so I went through that first six week with the women and the topics I discussed were uh, sex and affection, communication, love and respect, leadership, understanding Jesus and who he is in your life. I went through that six weeks and then they were, I was like, okay, that's all I have. And they were like, do it again. I go, what do you mean? Do it again. We'll do, I don't, I go, I don't have any more topics. Like that, that's just what I, that's all I did. And, and so they're like, we don't care. Just do it again. So I did it again. And I invited women and then those women invited women and some of the same women came, some bowed out, new women joined, et cetera, et cetera. So I just kept repeating and refining the homework, the the topics every week and sharing and basically just literally getting there and just telling stories, telling stories mm-hmm. of what happened in my life and how I transitioned from this thought pattern and this way of thinking to how God transformed my way of thinking and how I got into the Bible. And I really started to study, well, in Genesis one and two and three, what is God's original blueprint for marriage? And then following up with, well, what is the New Testament saying about these things that how are we to relate with people? And And what is the New Testament saying about uh, husbands and wives? And what is Jesus saying in how he lives uh, life and how we're to love people? And so I just am continually, my mind is continually blown uh, by the things that God just keeps teaching me about what it means to love well, like really love well. And I used to probably have that thought of, when you meet your friends and you meet outside people, you're, you're cordial, you're nice, you love them, you know, you're gracious or whatever. But then sometimes you go back home and you're like, let me just let it out. (laughs) You know, like I've, I've been nice to everyone else. I'm tired and I'm just going to let it out. And my family is going to know like the real me and they're going to know my ups and they're going to know my downs and stuff like that. But what I've been driving myself towards or what I feel God is working in on me is what if at home where you are one with this other person, what if that person is your place to be to be safe, to feel naked and unashamed? Where What if that place is where you allow the love to pour out from there first, like practicing on this spouse of yours? first so that when you go out and love others it's a little bit more genuine because you practiced loving sometimes the hardest person to love because you know them so intimately right and you can't like turn on that switch on and off as much as you would like to and I guess just trying to stop uh that that drift you know like if we just drift along in marriage, we're going to just drift apart. But if you're drifting in the water and you look towards land, you go, oh my gosh, I got to move towards land. I got to move towards that, which I'm drifting away from. And I think that's Mm -hmm. what we need to do when we're in marriage too, is rather than allowing our marriages to just drift apart. What does it mean to actually move towards that person you might naturally want to drift away from because you're just so frustrated with them? And believe me, my husband and I are as far from the East as the West when it comes 
to how we think, how we're wired, how we're created. We are really different, but God is just using that to refine me and teach me how to love. And, um, it has blown me out of the water. So anyway, God is using you to teach others. Yes. So he's teaching you. I love it. Yes. And so now I'm in this 2018 and I'm hosting three different wife labs, uh, currently like at the same time. And I'm, it's, I'm torn because it's like really exciting. And this is the first time I actually hosted a wife lab in my home. It's always been at the church Mm -hmm. and I just love the dynamic of having women in my home and just being able to, talk about these things, um, talk about God, you know, and just share, you know, what's going on. Like when people say, you know, uh, you just need to accept the, you know, the gift of Jesus's love and just being able to say, I mean, has anyone questioned what does that actually mean to just accept the gift of Jesus's love? I mean, I know we talk about it. I know it's written in the Bible, but what does that actually just mean to Mm -hmm. actually do it? You know, and sometimes it's those little things that we get into this habit of talking in Christianese talk, Mm -hmm. but what is it like when you get down to the root of those words and what it actually means to like walk in it or live in it or experience it. Like, what does that look like? You know, I just want to talk about that stuff because that's the kind of stuff that I think people don't talk about. And I think that's the reality. And it's the same thing with marriage. You know, like I'm a Christian and I was raised in a way that it's, you know, don't have sex until you're married. And now I'm married. And now all of a sudden, Hey, sex is a free for all go for it, you know, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't like, how do you go through that? And so I, (laughs) what's what's the transition actually? Yeah, Where's the healthy transition and how do Mm -hmm. we like, what does that look like? And so I share with women, my mindset shift of like going from, Oh my gosh, is it a sex night or is it not a sex night? I have no idea. I think I'm supposed to be in the mood tonight, but I don't know how to get there. And I can tell my husband's on edge, so it's probably time, but I'm not wired that way in the same way he is. So how do you understand your husband and how he's wired and understanding his threshold and then understanding yours? And then how do you like heal from any past hurts that you may have had in this area of intimacy Mm -hmm. and how do you seek Jesus to heal you in those places so that when it's time to fully love this person that you have committed your life to be married to, how do you go all in into loving them (laughs) in this emotional and physical and intellectual and spiritual way? So, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that Wife Lab is about. That's the kind of stuff I love to talk about and unpack and just really see, like, what what was God thinking? And then how did Satan come in and usurp it all and, like, start filling everybody's lives with lies? And where does it go wrong? And where can we recognize uh, where it's gone awry? And then how can we work at, like, standing firm against him and the lies that he wants to whisper in us, convincing us, you know, otherwise? And and then, of course, like, moving into really leaning into God's design that is, um, you know, it, it was thwarted from Genesis with, um, you know, Adam and Eve's sin, but Jesus came to redeem um, and to encourage us to... Uh, believe in him and then, and then live a new life from then on, you know, like Mm -hmm. accept him Mm -hmm. for um, his sin and his covering. And, and um, yeah. So anyway, that's kind of, well, anyway, so, well, so wife lab, so the three wife labs is uh, the one at church, the one at my home. And those are both groups of like 20 women. 
But then thirdly, I was invited by a mom's next group that said, would you come and do wife lab for our group? So now I have like a group of 80 women at a church and it's so interesting. And, and you talk about being brave and like this fear of talking and stuff like that. Like it's one thing to have 20 women or, you know, 15 to 20 women in my living room and talking to them to kind of being up on stage and be able to like translate Mm -hmm. to 80 women when it's just when I have 20 women in 15 to 20 women in my living room and I can talk to them there and I can, you know, there's a little bit of back and forth conversation and I'm like sensing their heartbeat. Right. But then when I go and I'm standing before 80 women and then after I talk, they're like having their individual discussions, I can't be at every table from then, you know, so I don't hear the heartbeat of what's going on. I don't hear what resonated. I don't hear what caused them heartache. I don't hear what they were like. I just can't see that happening or working for me or, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? I can't, I can't hear what ruffles their feathers or I can't hear what resonates with them. And so I just consider that, you know, God has asked me to just be there to show up and to plant seeds and he's going to water them and he's going to make them grow. And it was just so interesting. I like last week I sat at a table and those women, what they discussed was I was talking about date nights other than prayer carving out time for date nights is the second most important thing that my husband and I did for our marriage that changed the trajectory of our marriage for us. And that was what, that was the second most thing. So this particular table just took off with that conversation of why don't we have date nights? Like how could we have date nights? Or, you know, I just don't see us even like, I don't even see it possible. I don't even know if I have the energy to do it. (laughs) You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like just that, this real struggle. And then another group, they were totally on that topic of, I had told the story about being in the boat with God and God and I are floating along and God saying, Julie, look at this. Julie, look at that. Julie, look at this. And I'm like, okay, yeah, God. Yeah, God. I see that. I see that. You know, and I'm just kind of like, hurry it along, God, you know, hurry it along. And he's wanting me to just sit and rest so that he can show me stuff. And we hit a sandbar like in the river where it's a little rocky and stuff like that. And I go, Oh my gosh, God, we're stuck. Let me get out and I'll pull the boat. I'll move us along God. And he's going, what are you doing? Get back in the boat. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'll help us along. I'll help us along. And it's just this attitude that I had that, you know, I'm, I'm in charge, God, I'm going to, I'm going to make us charge forward. God, you just sit in the boat and I've got this. And he's like, you know what? You're going to get your feet wet. The rocks are slippery. You're going to fall on your butt you know, and I don't want you to do that. So just get back in the boat with me so that I can show you my glory because my glory is in the miracle because I'm going to rise that water. I'm going to rise that water Mm -hmm. and we're going to flow. And Mm -hmm. I want to show you how I can rise that water. And, and I just was sharing with women that that was, that was kind of a snapshot of where I used to be. And how I'm like learning now to just go sit in the boat with him and rest and really pay attention to what he wants to show me, really allow him to just uh, be glorified by the miracle of raising the water up so that I could just see Mm -hmm. him work Mm -hmm. in that miraculous way. And so it was just so interesting. The one table was talking about date nights. The other table was talking about being in the boat and how they found and identified. Yeah. I'm always like that. I'm trying to pull God along. I'm trying to, you know, tell him what's up and that we need to move forward in this. And, and, you know, and that's how my prayer life used to be when I prayed for my husband, I was like, God, let me just show you. My husband has a hardened heart and he needs to change. Don't you see it? Don't you see it? And, you know, God's like, no, 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 get in the boat and watch me watch the miracles that is going to happen when you start praying for your husband and it's going to change your heart. It's going to change his heart. And, and I want you to see that. So, well, and, um, you mentioned earlier, just when you were telling the story about hearing that song that you had been kind of wrestling with, I don't know, what would you call it fear as you were preparing for one of your wife labs that night or, um, 
Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So and- that was um yeah, it was kind of like, okay, so I'm going to Israel and Egypt on Friday, next week. Like tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> So I'm going there tomorrow and I just like, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. You know, I just don't even, I don't know what I'm thinking that I'm trying to prepare for wife lab, you know, and a friend of mine goes, well, maybe, you know, don't prepare. And in general, I know like a template, like an outline of the things that I'm going to discuss, but I struggle in this area because speakers, you know, great speakers, apparently, are supposed to have a script, you know, they're Mm -hmm. supposed to have this outline, they're supposed to know it. And I've heard speakers like, um, at maybe I heard them in at one venue, and then I heard them at another venue. And they're telling their talk, and it's almost verbatim. Like, that's how scripted Mm -hmm. that they are. Mm -hmm. And You know, when I heard it the first time, I was like, oh, my gosh, that moved me. That moved me. That that was me. That resonated. And then when I heard it the second time, I go, oh, my gosh, brilliant. You, you know, say the same thing. You don't even have to think about it. And so I think I want to be that polished speaker. (laughs) I want to be like that. And yet I keep wrestling with, but God, I just want to be open to your spirit. I want to be open to your spirit and what it is that you want spoken. And then, of course, I had another friend challenge me and go, well, if you prepare a week in advance, don't you think the spirit can be there with you, too? And I'm like, yes, that's true. (laughs) But I just try. I've been wrestling with, like, why would you want me to be a speaker? And yet I don't feel like I could be very scripted. (laughs) You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, Well, yeah. And I wrestle with that, too. Like this very conversation about doing a podcast interview and not really knowing where how it's going to go how it's going to turn out and how much how much is like oh i'm just going to trust god to lead me in the moment but then what do i have to do to make that happen you know and it's like yeah. uh, that's hard it's it's really hard yeah. um well i I've, I've loved hearing just kind of how things have gone and just the growth of wife labs. And, um, Oh my gosh, I just know that there are women and marriages that are, um, drawing closer to God and closer to each other, um, as a result of getting to be in those conversations with you. So way to go for taking the next step and the next step and the next step. Yeah. (laughs) And trying to figure out if you need to script it or not or whatever. Right. (laughs) Well, it's uh, the other thing that is just awesome is when I have women that like I run into, like maybe they went to Wife Lab a few sessions ago or something and they come up to me and I run into them someplace and they're like, you know, I never told you, but the day before Wife Lab, a friend of mine from out of town heard about it and they had just moved, but she said if she was in town, she would totally join it and she felt like I should do it. And She's like that day before that I was just wrestling with, you know, like, is my marriage really where I'm supposed to be? You know, Mm -hmm. should I divorce? Like, Mm -hmm. I literally, and she goes, and I just thought, you know, I'm going to go. And she goes, oh my gosh, my marriage is transformed. (laughs) You know, like my, we're so in love again now. And Mm -hmm. my husband comes home and we make dinner together and we have the best time and we totally reconnected and, um, to the praise of his glory. Yes. I think, oh my gosh, God, that is what you want. Your heart wants people Mm -hmm. to be married and you to be glorified through that. And, um, I just think, amen. That is so awesome. But that's, I mean, it's not an isolated story. I've heard it from multiple, you know, and I'm just like, I'm just being obedient and God is, you you know, watering and he's doing what mm-hmm. needs to be done. I'm just showing up. Well, and um, I've been thinking about this week specifically, um, these two practices of confession and repentance and um, 
and I feel like I'm able to adapt what I'm thinking about, about those things related to our God-shaped dreams to what you're talking about, where you've been able to, um, you know, listening to God, gather women, and people have been able to tell their truth, like probably admitting, confessing that their marriages aren't where they would like them to be or where God would like their marriages to be. And that act of praying for their husband, of turning around and having a different mindset about their marriage is repentance, you know, and these are things that God calls us to, of, you know, to confess our sins, to confess where things aren't right and to repent, turn around and go a different direction. That's exactly what you're talking about. And I feel like that is what I learned last weekend from my sweet friend, Carrie Jenkins, who I talked about in episode 96 about that we confess where we feel fear, where we're not, where we're stuck, where our feet just can't even move forward because we're, um, whatever it is, we're trying to put our identity in what somebody might think of us or the results or the outcome of the thing that we want to do. Our, our identity is resting there. And those things are all going to disintegrate and fall apart <laughs> um, at the end of time. Like none of that stuff matters. Um, instead, he calls us to put our hope to rest our identity in Jesus Christ. And so when we confess God, I'm not doing that right now. I'm I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? Would you help me turn and look the other direction away from the thing where I'm trying to place my hope to you and help me to keep my hope there? Then we can walk more holy with him. And I think what I'm experiencing at least is when I let go of my agenda, the way that I think it has to go and let him run it. Like you said, Hey, Merritt, let's just get on a call. And I was like, "Mm, uh, okay. You know, (laughs) like, I don't, I don't know what God's going to do in this conversation. Um, but I'm willing to say yes and, and let him lead this when, You know, the practicality is like, I need a podcast episode on October 24th. And Julie said, hey, I'll talk to you. (laughs) So (laughs) here we are talking. (laughs) That's awesome. Anyway. um, Well, so here's, this is where God has taken me with that, that fear of speaking. mm -hmm. So when, this is what he's working on with me. When I worry or have anxiousness about what I'm going to say or what the message is, even though I might be praying to God and asking him, you know, what is it? You know, this is what I think the, this is what I think this week is supposed to be about. You know, this is what wife lab is written like this, you know, this week we're supposed to be talking about how Jesus is our savior and our husband isn't our savior Mm -hmm. because he's human. So he never was meant to be our savior. You know, like how do we, you know, look to Jesus for this. But when I sit there and I wrestle with, you know, what that is. And then afterwards I sit there and go, Oh my gosh, I shouldn't have said that. Or, Oh my Mm -hmm. gosh, I didn't, you know, like, Oh my gosh, uh, did I say enough? Did I over talk? Did I say too much? Like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have said it that way. What is happening when I step in that way is I am focused on me. Yeah, I'm focused on me. And God's going, no, 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 it's all about me. <laughs> so don't focus on me. So what I do is now I pray about it and I hold it loosely. I hold anything loosely. And I just think about him and his glory and that he's glorified. And I guard so much self-criticism, you know, like that I don't self-criticize because sometimes when we're like self-criticizing, it can be masked as like humility, like, Oh, you know, but it's still self-focus. Right. So anyway, he's taught me no, you just walk off that stage and go, I did what I, I showed up. I did what I was supposed to do. And, you know, God is glorified and I'm off the stage, not Mm -hmm. in an arrogant way, but like in a humble way of knowing that I was 
that I've done the due diligence work of being obedient to what I was called to do. Yeah. Right. Yep. Do you get? And so then, so anyway, I really, you know, I could get caught up in anxiety or worry or stuff like that, but I really just go, Oh my gosh, stop it right now because anxiety and worry mm-hmm. are self-focus and mm-hmm. I want God to be glorified. I want the focus to be on him and not on me. So I'm going to not do that anymore. Yeah. And the enemy wants to keep us in that anxiety. And as we engage with that, we're engaging with him instead of with the Lord. And so that's, yeah, that's great. Well, um, I want to be really, um, is it time to go? Yeah, I want to be mindful of our time. And okay, uh, let's let's get off then. Yeah, and <laughs> and and I want to say I'm just going to plant a seed. I know you're going to. You said Israel and Egypt. Mm-hmm. So um, my idea of hey, let's do a Facebook Live next week. That's not going to work. So maybe when you get back, we could do something like that. Connect with the listeners. Okay. Um, yeah, that'd be awesome. On any of this, like on marriage, on fear of whatever, doing your thing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, whatever. Okay. I'm happy to talk about whatever. I mean, I'm like, no topic is off limits for me. Awesome. Oh, Julie, thank you so much for being a sweet encouragement to me and to the listeners. And um, I appreciate you coming on with me today. So friends, thanks for hanging in there with me on this one. And um, I'm just going to say like, that was easier than I expected. I'm feeling a little bit sweaty, but I wanted to be real and in the moment. And, um, that conversation with Julie was totally unscripted. I had a small outline, but I wanted to take an opportunity to practice what I'm preaching of just, um, go and do the thing, you know, whatever your next step is, whatever your little baby step is, that is, um, in the back of your mind, like, God, I think you're, I think you're encouraging me through your spirit to go do this thing, go do it. And you're not going to die. I'm pretty sure you're not going to die by doing it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to in hope and trust in Christ and his work in me and the things that he's prompted me with, um, to take the step forward so that, I could encourage you to do the same. So thanks for being here today. As always, will you come on over to the Devoted Dreamers Facebook group and talk about anything that kind of came into your mind as we were having this conversation today? I will tell you, as Julie was talking about YFLAB, it absolutely um, brought up for me struggles within my own marriage and things that God wants to work out in me and in us. And so if you want to talk about that, come talk about that. Um, I think Julie might even be in that group. So when she's back from her vacation, she could, um, chime in to anything that you have to share on that topic. But I will be back here next week with episode 98 To be honest, I have no idea who that's going to be, but we'll find out in the next couple days. Follow me on Instagram and um, there may be some opportunities to see who's coming on. You can find me on Instagram at Merit J-O. And the last thing I want to say before I go is the words to this precious song, Brave by Sarah Bareilles. She says, I wonder what would happen If you say what you want to say and let the words fall out, honestly, I want to see you be brave with what you want to say and let the words fall out, honestly, I want to see you be brave. I just want to see you. I just want to see you. I just want to see you be brave. Go be brave, my friends, and have a great day. Wow.